Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. And uh, Merry, uh, what's it? Oh, Merry Christmas or Eve of Christmas Eve. That's the one I was looking for. Merry Eve of Christmas Eve. Uh, you're at Coffee with Craig. Today, I wanted to come up, I wanted to talk about a story that's actually kind of in line with the theme, in line with the holidays. Uh, gentlemen, I had a chance to go to the Gun Rights Policy Conference. I had a chance to meet uh, a gentleman named Marcus Weldon. Uh, and I just wanted to tell you his story because it is a Christmas story. Uh, Marcus Weldon is, uh, uh, is a r- resident of Detroit. He, uh, uh, of several years back, basically about two years ago, he was involved in an incident where he was uh, dubbed the Santa Shooter. He was basically leaving a Christmas party at his job. He was wearing a Santa suit. And uh, someone that he knew was being accosted by two gentlemen. And he came to her aid. Uh, Turned into a scuffle. The men uh, uh, attacked him uh, with a firearm. And he basically, he was a concealed carry permit holder. Took out his firearm and defended himself. uh, Shooting both of the assailants. Uh, Police arrived and summarily arrested Santa Claus. Uh, Once again, arrested Santa for defending himself. Now, went through the entire entire process and even the prosecutor came, basically the prosecutor came out and decided that they were going to uh, basically go after him for attempted murder. and then on top of it, so, so as he's going through this process and he's looking to try and defend himself, once again, uh, from a situation that, one, was not his doing, was not his cause, but he was basically defending himself. And the prosecutor decided, no, we don't want people carrying firearms. We don't want people to be able to defend themselves. So uh, then uh, later they would offer him a plea deal. Uh, that would have seen him basically with a criminal record. He would have had to go to jail for probably a less period of time than he would have. But uh, he decided to, uh, he says, stick to his guts. I prefer to say stick to his guns uh, and, and rode the case out. And it turns out in the end, uh, he was acquitted of all charges. Took, uh, took two years, two years of his life were taken uh, and two years worth of legal fees and all of that because this was a gentleman who, who number one, came to the aid of someone else, came to the aid of his fellow neighbor, number one. But number two, uh, he exercised his constitutional right to defend himself and defend others. And then number three, he decided that he was going to make sure that justice was done. And, you know, that's important because a lot of times in a lot of these cases, you know, it's not uncommon for individuals to be overcharged. You know, in particular, if you're a law-abiding citizen, uh, involved in a situation like this, it's not it's not uncommon for you to be for someone to be overcharged in a crime, and then have uh, uh, and it, a lot of times they do it in hopes that you know they'll uh, they'll reduce the charges or they'll offer you a plea deal. And they offered him a plea deal, and he said, "No, you know what? I'm going to stand up and I'm going to stand my ground. No pun intended, but I'm going to stand my ground because I didn't do anything wrong." Uh, and turns out, well, a jury of his peers agreed with him. Um, and, you know, that's important for us to understand is that, is that, you know, understand that even when you do everything right, you can do everything legally right as a concealed carry permit holder, but you are still, go- it is still going to impact your life. It is still going to impact you. There are still going to be legal consequences regardless of, what, regardless of whatever happens, even when you are totally right. But it also goes to show that there are those, uh, um, that there are those who believe that, that firearms are bad and that those who want to own a firearm, whether legally or not, are bad. And they're going to prosecute you for exercising your constitutional rights. So I want to encourage you, uh, if you can find Marcus, uh, once again, Marcus Weldon, you can find him on Facebook. Uh, he's got a public figure page. Check him out. He's a real sharp young man. Uh, and really kind of, you know, this was a real eye-opening experience for him because he had a chance to really see, you know, the Second Amendment uh, as a civil rights issue because as he exercised his civil right to keep and bear arms, he saw that then the government was coming after him, trying to take those rights away, trying to punish him for exercising his civil rights. Uh, So he got a a first chance, a first, you know, upfront 
uh, and personal look uh, at this issue. So let's go and see what you guys have to say about that. Um, you know, something else I wanted to bring up to you guys. You know, we've, uh, you may have noticed that uh, uh, at this we've issue. moved our, let's go and see what you guys we, have to say about we've that. moved our, um, you know, something else I wanted to bring up to okay. you guys. Okay. You know, uh, you Technical issues. That, there we go. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so basically, uh, we've been moving our times. We moved it around closer to eight thirty, closer to nine. Would really love to know from you guys which one you got, which time you guys think is best. Uh, what time works best for those of you who who like to uh, who like to watch the show? Uh, let us know. Eight thirty, nine o'clock. It ain't gonna be earlier than eight thirty. Let me just for those of you who are thinking eight o'clock, seven thirty. Sorry, brah, or. Lady, sorry, not going to happen. Anyway, so what do you guys have to say? <sighs> For this reason, insurance should be considered by gun owners. It can help with the exorbitant cost of legal defense. That is so very true. It, I, I do believe that CCW holders, uh, you know, for your own personal protection, for the protection of your assets uh, and your family, I, I do believe that it is important that you get some sort of insurance that will help cover you. Uh, to help protect yourself, because once again, no matter what, whether you're right or wrong, you're still going to have to deal with legal consequences, or, or you're going to have to go through the legal process, and you want to be able to afford uh, the best legal counsel that you can get. Um, can CCW uh, reciprocity potentially help Californians by acquiring non-resident CCWs in other states? Um, I'm not really sure. And once again, you don't really know anything about reciprocity until, you know, until we see what an actual bill looks like. You know, a lot of people want to ask us, well, what about this? What about this idea? What about that idea? And the problem is the ideas in general are one thing, but you never really know until you actually see uh, the language in the bill. Because what they say, the devil's in the details. Uh, beer with Craig. Wow. I like that. Ben. Uh, ben, I like you. You're going to get the comment of the day. Beer with Craig. I'm down. How about a Guinness? Um, I've been saying for a while now, I would love new laws that protect those that have to defend themselves or others from being sued from family of the criminals. Basically, the law would... I'm sorry, this thing keeps moving on me. Uh, basically, the law would protect all invest all investigations have cleared the that have cleared the individual. Um, I mean, then once again, that's not a bad idea. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, just because you're cleared of civil uh, of criminal uh, charges doesn't necessarily mean that you're cleared of civil charges. And you know, unfortunately, the way our our legal system works, especially here in California, oftentimes it's better to it's cheaper to settle than it is to actually fight it in court. Uh, but hey, welcome to America. Or welcome to America. America is a different place. Um, let's see. Uh, David Paul says 8 p.m. Yeah. Good luck with that one. You can always catch the, uh, the rewind, <laughs> the rerun at 8 p.m. <laughs> good, good try, though. Good try, though, David. Um, 8.30, 8.30, 5 p.m., yeah, B -O that, oh, that's when we're supposed to do beer with Craig. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, what right does any prosecutor have to tell a law-abiding citizen not to defend their life from multiple attackers? Well, evidently, according to the jurors, the prosecutor has no right, um, but it's also important to understand, and you know, those who have CCWs or have taken the CCW class know that a huge part of that class is, you know, identifying and it, it is talking about legal use of force. When is it legal? When is it not? When is it appropriate? When is it not? Because it, it I mean, it's a, it's a serious decision when, when a, a CCW holder chooses to draw their weapon, um, it is to defend themselves with lethal force. And someone's life, first of all, including theirs, is going to be changed forever, right? And, and someone else's potentially is going to be changed forever. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, that when you're doing it, that it's justified. And that's a big part of that, of, a big part of that class. Um, it's, I, for, at least in terms of CCW training, uh, that to me, that is the most important part, is making sure that you are truly aware of when it is appropriate 
and when is when it is uh, when it is inappropriate. Uh, any other interesting comments? A uh, similar thing happened to a friend of mine. This is uh, Daryl uh, McCown. McCown. A similar thing happened to a friend of mine. Uh, to yours in court, the accuser in the court stating that, wow, just move right in front of me, Stated, stating my friend could, okay, yeah, I'm barely able to, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time reading that one, but it's not an uncommon situation. It's not an uncommon situation for someone to defend themselves, uh, for them to then be charged, and then for the courts to then come back, or the, the to be overcharged. And then for the, the, the courts to then come back and hope they take a plea. And you guys got to understand, it, it's not uncommon for people to be charged with things that they shouldn't be charged with. Uh, and they do it with the hope that, uh, that eventually you'll plea it out. And I think that right now our court system, at least from the prosecutorial point, is heavily dependent on people pleading out their cases, on people saying, hey, you know, I, you, know you overcharge them and then come back and say, well, we'll give you this lesser charge if you just plead it out. And that saves you legal costs uh, as well as you don't get potentially convicted of a greater crime. You know, I, I don't see how that is justice, but that seems to be what some people like to call justice. Well, that's going to be it for today. I want to wish every single one out there a uh, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> uh, and anyway, but I just want to wish everyone a Happy Holidays. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, from this point forward, I am going to be in complete and utter chill mode. I hope you do the same. Folks, you take care. Have a fantastic weekend and have a great Christmas. If you like these updates, please share them with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel.